Hello everybody, this is Luna Claire Astrology, formerly known as Astrology Crafts with Ildiko. I have signed myself up for a name change, uh, as I believe Luna Claire describes much more who I am. Uh, Luna Claire means moonlight in French and I was born under the full moon um, and that moon is very prominent in my chart. So hence the reason why. Thank you so much for joining me in this video with Luna Claire Astrology, where I'm going to discuss the June horoscopes and the June energies for all 12 signs. As usual, I'm going to go, I'm going to give you some explanation about the the energies, upcoming energies in June, and then I will break it down to all 12 signs. If you would like to book a reading with me, you will find my details down below. Um, please, otherwise, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channels so more and more people can benefit from these videos. So, Let's jump right into June astrology, you guys. I bet you are eagerly waiting already. What is the stars are promising you for the next month to come? So for the majority of the month, Sun is going to be in Gemini, which is a very lighthearted, very sociable energy. Um, very, uh, it's an air energy. That means uh, there's uh, lots of communication going on, lots of learning as well. Uh, as we know, this is uh, the examination time in schools as well. Now, Venus is in Taurus, and that's the best position for Venus to be. Uh, that means we are enjoying some sensual pleasures, such as food, eating, and drinking and going out maybe uh you know uh, something to do with arts uh arts and crafts maybe uh some drinks as well some social aspect as well mars is in aries and these are all planets that are in very good dignity so i believe although some planets are retrograde but we have Venus in a good in a good position, Taurus in a good position. Saturn is very strongly featured in uh, in the sky as well, very strong in Aquarius. Um, Mercury then will move uh, in around the mid months is going to move into Gemini as well, uh, going direct. So that's um, these are all planets that are enjoying a very strong position and so Mars for example in Aries it means that our action is in the right place you know we are acting out of instinct um, you know a little bit impulsively but in the meantime it means that our action is uh, very enthusiastic very instinctive but Mars in Aries we know how to act correctly of course, that's a general energy. I'm not talking about personal horoscopes. Well, not just yet. So the main aspects of June is definitely going to be Mercury turning direct, Saturn turning retrograde, and all that is happening on the same day. Also, we will have a full moon in Sagittarius and a new moon in Cancer. Now, the maturity of the personal planets, especially once Mercury turns and direct and moves back to Gemini, are going to be very strong. That means, you know, our personal energies of love and money, our actions, our communications now are featured very, very strongly. Some planets are, as I said, Saturn uh, turning retrograde. Uh, so that's going to give us some time to introspect into uh, all the Saturnian qualities in Aquarius. Uh, Pluto is already retrograde. Um, direct in Taurus, the 26 degrees. It's going to conjunct Argo, the most evil fixed star in the sky. So I highly recommend not to initiate any projects on that day uh, because it will carry that evil quality of the Argo fixed star. Um, it also activates the Scorpio lunar eclipse from last year November so, so that could be some resolution and clarification coming up 
with regards to that lunar eclipse. Saturn also is going to turn retrograde on that same day. So that's another reason not to initiate anything important on that day and even the previous other days after that. Uh, it is going to be the time to revisit your plans and projects, make sure that they have good and strong foundation, uh, a solid structure to them how effective you are, how can you go forward with your project, uh, how can you organize your time better, how can you overcome your hurdles, and you need to be more patient. Uh, some of you will be able to withdraw to themselves a little bit uh, and do some more introspection. Now, this time, the Saturn, the Saturn going retrograde, it usually lasts for five months. So um, this is the time where uh, when Saturn gives you the chance to kind of uh, revisit your plans to make sure that whatever you are planning, whatever you are restructuring, it has a solid, strong foundation and the result is going to be masterful. Now, the full moon in Sagittarius is going to be a little bit of icky one. Uh, that is a combination of a plan and project related to education, travel, communication, advertising, publishing, and beliefs. And the ruler of the new moon is connected to Mars and Chiron conjunction, which often talks about physical wound or body trauma. It's very accident prone. Uh, it can inflict or you can inflict in Q Curable physical wound on somebody, sometimes because of rage or anger, uh, because Mars and Chiron conjunction is extremely reactive and extremely impulsive. So you need to find a way how to constructively channel your anger on your own rage and take the chance to... Um, commit to work on your unprocessed pain so you can experience uh, the transformative the transformative power of a rage now at the end of the month there's going to be a new moon in cancer and that is going to be again a very funny one um so new moons are usually like newborn babies. It's a very new energy. It's, it's, it, it begins a new cycle of two weeks or perhaps six months till, uh, till the next, next full moon or till the next cancer full moon. And uh, we can usually we begin something new and we can plant seeds of intention to go to manifest something. Now, this new moon is squared by Jupiter, which gives um, overconfidence. It gives um, access in terms of food and alcohol, and it can give this loyalty and, and adds a darker aspect because of the conjunction, exact conjunction with Black Moon Lilith. Let me just talk uh, a little bit about Black Moon Lilith. She is a dog deity. Um, it's not a real planet or point. Uh, Lilith represents the furthest point between the Earth and the Moon's orbit, therefore symbolizing the most hidden and obscure feelings and, and part of our personality. It is associated with darkness. It's about the part of us that is rejected. Black Moon Lilith, as I said, she is a dog deity. She's the fallen angel, the demon, the temptress, the seductive, the darker, that embodies the darker aspect of sexuality, the taboo. Black Moon Lilith is the inner bitch. It also always very present with any dog experiences. She was According to the mythology, Adam's first wife, but she disobeyed him. Therefore, she was rejected and escorted out of paradise. Um, if it's very prominent in your horoscope, like let's say in on your ascendant or on your midheaven or with your sun or the moon, um, it means that you embody these traits in your personality. 
Now, to give you an example who has the um, Dark Moon Lilith, it's Marilyn Monroe. So as we know, Marilyn Monroe is, a, even today, the biggest sexual symbol, female sexual symbol, although there are many beautiful females out there um, as celebrities, I don't think anybody ever came close to the sexual power, to the seductiveness, uh, to the beauty uh, of the female sexuality as much as Marilyn Monroe did. But if you look into her life, she was really an unhappy person and um, also suffered an immature death. Um, and nobody even today knows exactly how this is connected to the Kennedys, how is this connected to, um, you know, to the darker part of her personality. The real challenge with this Cancer New Moon is that uh, the Cancer qualities are very subtle and very indirect. Uh, it could play out that uh, somebody in the family creates a poisonous domestic atmosphere. Um, the square from Jupiter also suggests there is excess energy of overindulgence, oversensitivity, and overconfidence regarding Black Moon Lilith. So your intentions that you are just about to set during that new moon in Cancer can really manifest into a big, fat, nasty, monstrous experience in the future. So what you need to be careful of, that these energies are present and you need to just really watch your intentions. Don't plant weeds of intention because then what you will reap with the full moon two weeks down the line or with the cancer moon six months down the line is going to be um, equally monstrous and equally nasty but in just a much higher scale i would love to hear where is uh, your black moon lilith uh, you can check it out um, with astro.com or you can also go and cast your chart with my chart calculator and uh, please comment down below what is your sign of Black Moon Lilith? Is it prominently placed in your chart? Is it the sun? Is it with the moon, ascendant or mid heaven? Now let's see all the 12 signs, sun, moon and rising. I usually suggest to watch these horoscopes for your rising sign, uh, but because that's what gives you the most precise manifestation but of course you can watch it for your sun sign as well as your moon sign this the sun sign energy will give you more about will feature more about the career aspect of your life whereas the moon sign is the more emotional more inward interpretation or more connected to your family and to your home life the more private area of your lives so let's dear scorpio so the majority of the months, the sun is going to be in your eighth house. And so it, it will illuminate, um, shine brightly in this uh, rather dark house, let me just say. Uh, first of all, your focus is going to be finances. And in that, I'm talking about the finances and money that you haven't earned. So what could that be? It could be your partner's money your shared resources, your shared investment. It could be to something to do with taxes, maybe inheritances. Uh, it could be something to do with your maintenance or alimony. Now, besides the financial aspect, uh, this is also the house of transformation, sexuality, trust issues, intimacy, uh, deep traumas as well. So the sun is going to illuminate one or two of these areas. And um, so because of that, it your focus is going to be not so much, um, you know, being socializing and outgoing, but, uh, and being gregarious, but um, focusing on one of these issues and uh, digging down deep, um, in this house, we don't take things superficially. We think they take, take things very seriously and, and, and very deeply. So we become 
sort of a little detectives to, to find the roots, to find the emotional traumas or sexual issue or trust issue or intimacy issue or financial issue uh, that is causing us, uh, stops us from having perfect happiness. Um, after you found it, it is going to be this time to eliminate these issues. So clear out psychic junk, get rid of bad habits in physically as well. It is a very good time to do a cleansing diet uh, to eliminate everything that is junk in our psyche or junk in our spirit and physical body as well. So it is going to be the time to find those issues, dig deep down and cleanse and eliminate all of that. So you can come out uh, transformed like a beautiful um, phoenix bird. That's the symbol of the eighth house. And then Venus is in your seventh house uh, along with Uranus. So she will bring some pleasure definitely and some joy in seventh house issues, but meeting up with Uranus, she will bring some sudden excitement as well, for sure, I have to say. So before meeting with Uranus or after meeting with Uranus, um, you are going to enjoy some time with your marriage partner, with your relationship, business relationships, perhaps you will, you per perhaps gain some finances from your, some money from uh, client, client based business, if that's what you have, or you're just going to enjoy some audience around yourself. Uh, it is a good time to smooth out relationships, uh, whether they are personal or business ones, uh, you, because you are agreeable and you are cooperative more than any other time. Yeah, during those times when Venus is going to meet Uranus, although things will become a little bit unpredictable and a little bit shocking, perhaps. Um, so this could be some sudden turn of events for sure. Uranus is the planet of ultimate truth. So if you haven't been living your ultimate truth in your relationship, for some of you, only for some of you, and that has to show up in the other places of the chart as well, uh, this can manifest as a break on the relationship, but it doesn't have to be. It can bring some sudden events, you know, you can travel somewhere or you can just have some exciting time with your partner or, or to do something out of the ordinary, something out of your convention. Now you have a strong desire to change and that's why I said that for some of you, if the relationship is not truthful, then your desire will turn towards breaking it off. And this could come across somewhat shocking or somewhat unconventional. Uh, you, are, you, have, you are having this desire to, to, to do something out of the ordinary that is not considered normal in our normal society. Normal society okay? So something futuristic, some, something unconventional, something is, you know, that is out of the ordinary. So maybe just travel some, something or do something with regards to your appearance, um, because Venus talks about that as well. Now, Mars Mars is in the sixth house, and this is your ruler planet, so that becomes very important. So that means you are, you know, you're busy with organizing yourself in your work environment and uh, doing a lot for your health, pro probably. But Mars is going to meet Jupiter in the, well, it has met Jupiter by, on the 29th of May, it has met already Jupiter, but still, the energy of that expanded excessive amount of energy that the Mars Jupiter conjunction bring, it will be felt at least in the beginning, beginning days of June. So that means, you know, you have this excessive amount of energy, you're very optimistic, you're very courageous, you're very bold, you want to expand your horizon, uh, you're extremely confident, and you're really assertive, and you just have this so much energy uh, that uh, you have to make sure that you, you have to make sure that you are channeling it to the right way. So do you can do excessive amount of workload. You can work for your health. Maybe it's, uh, it is going to be the time to start a new exercise routine. Um, 
you know, your daily life will really speed up and becomes really, really busy and becomes very adventurous as well with Jupiter being there. It will expand your horizon. Or perhaps during your, your work, you might have to travel somewhere as well. That could be the part of the picture as well. Uh, so just make sure you, you add channel that energy uh, well, uh, because we don't want it to manifest as a, you know, as an infection or inflammation in the body, because sixth house is also the house of health. So sometimes that can manifest. Then we have Saturn in your fourth house, and this is the house of home and family. So you will need to revisit and and for the next five months to come, actually, because Saturn, when Saturn goes retrograde, it goes retrograde for five months. It's not like Mercury. So you need to revisit during that time and restructure your home and your family, your something to do with your parents, ancestors, or perhaps like a a relative or perhaps something to do with your property as well so you need to organize your home environment look at your living circumstances are they going to work for the long term um you know does the house physically as well is the structure of the house is is good it's going to be a good time to do some renovation if it's not good enough you know that's the time when you have to look at all of these you also may find that there is uh you know there is a duty uh for you yeah, there is a responsibility with regards to your home and your family that it, it can burden you a little bit and and makes you do a lot of inner work whether inner in yourself or whether as i said uh physically on on in the house that that you live in you need to solidify and identify uh, and explore your roots maybe face attachment issues if you are talking about the psychological uh, manifestation of Saturn being in the fourth house and being retrograde in your in the fourth house so basically you need to reflect on all Saturnian qualities uh, how were you embodied all the Saturnian qualities in your home property family environment okay and these qualities are responsibility maturity being well organized being you know well structured having a good foundation so you need to revisit these sort of issues and then you will have a full moon and that is going to take place in your second house and that is connected to again finances so that's a very financial house for financial months for you uh, so you need to uh, uh, well you actually no you don't need to it's going to happen it uh, things are going to culminate uh with regards to an earnings or regards uh, with regards to your resources finances um maybe a project that brought you money now is going to culminate and because of that you know when things come to a full fruition full manifestation it is going to be the time to let let go as well um, it could be also a revelation full moons often bring us something to our consciousness that we were unaware of so far uh, therefore you know giving us a light enlightening us um so this could be also an enlightenment, a revelation that is connected to your source of income uh, related. Uh, and this could also be an income that is related to abroad, to foreign people, to foreign land, uh, teaching, advertising, publishing of or that education, travel, this sort of uh, income I'm talking about. And then we have Mars and Chiron conjunction, and that also going to be partly the energy of the full moon, and that is going to be somewhat uh, not so comfortable. Chiron is the wounded healer, and um, and Mars is very physical, and and uh, also um, Aries is very, a very physical sign as well. So for some, this could manifest as a physical wound or body trauma, or it could manifest as an accident. Because Mars also rules your first house for you, it is a very high chance, actually, that is going to manifest as a physical wound. Um, 
and 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 it could be connected to your house issues as well since mars is very active uh, in the sixth house so just be careful you know when you're exercising or when you're traveling you know as i said you have this overly extensive energy make sure that you know your work environment is safe enough to work um you know so you couldn't gain any accidents there as i had as i said it's very important that channel that energy well if it's not a physical wound that is going to manifest um, then it might come out as um as a as, a, as an anger issue um because mars is obviously very angry uh <laughs> it rules our anger it's not a very angry planet it, it rules our anger it rules our age especially in areas it's very impulsive and very reactive as well uh, so there could be some clashes with regards to co-workers employees uh, the people or you know house professional if you are you know been active in the health area as well uh, but it is also a chance to commit to work on your unprocessed pain if you're talking about um, not uh, so much physical pain if you're talking about uh, perhaps um, anger issues um, so you can see the transform and you can experience the transformative um, power of rage then we have new moon in Cancer and it's going to take place in your ninth house, in the house of travel and, and higher learning. So there could be a new beginning, you know, an intention of, the, uh, of a travel or an intention of an education, intention of, uh, you know, it is going to be the time to plant the seeds of intention for maybe publishing or lawsuits. Whatever your intention is, that you have to double check that is it, it is um, not connected to any dark issues or uh, any issues to the dark aspects of sexuality, you know, overindulgence, overdoing something, the dark seductive side of sexuality, because there is a high chance that you are nurturing something into a manifestation later on with the full moon. Uh, that later becomes, uh, you know, uh, a toxic and poisonous experience. And as I said, this, because it takes place in your ninth house, it could be a travel plan, it could be a plan of education, it could be a plan of advertising, it could be a plan of something to do with your belief system as well, or maybe something to do with a teacher as well, because ninth house also uh, is the house of teachers. So that was my prediction for you, dear Scorpio. I wish you all the best. I hope this helped. And if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button for me. Thank you, bye-bye. Hey, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and press the subscribe button for even more videos on astrology.